This is the Seiko 37A three-hander electronic balance-driven movement featuring transistorized switching. This movement was a base movement used in the EL370 series of electronic watches that Seiko produced from about 1968 through to the early 1970s and was probably the longest lived of the electronic movements that Seiko produced. The 3700 series movements run at 21,600 beats per hour. Um, and when you use a conventional time graph, a timing machine, to regulate the watches, you can get a, a nice clean uh, timing trace from these movements that allow you to set the beat error and to regulate the movement to get them to run true. But the time grapher won't give you an accurate measure of the amplitude. In order to f measure the amplitude of these watches, you have to take some other route. The amplitude is defined as the maximum displacement from the mean position. And there are two ways that we can uh, measure this, uh, assuming that we can capture the position of the balance at one or other of its two turning points. The first of these is to measure the angle of each turning point relative to the position of the balance at its resting position, um, which is the, point, the position that the balance finds itself in when there's no current flowing through the circuit block. Uh, and the, the other approach, perhaps a slightly easier approach, is simply to do what we've done here, which is to measure the total displacement from one turning point to the other, and then divide that value by two. So in this case, what I did was to record some slow motion video of the, amp of the balance in operation to record the two turning points where the balance is at each extreme of its oscillation. As the balance rotates anti-clockwise, it will go through a full 360 degree rotation and end its rotation at the sort of anti-clockwise turning point, at which point the magnets attached to the balance you, uh, positioned at about 12 o'clock in the, uh, the view that we have at this point and then it uh, changes direction and reaches the other extreme, its other turning point in which it's undergoing a clockwise rotation with the balance at about 6 o'clock. And the difference, the notional difference between those two positions is about 180 degrees but we must remember that the balance itself will have undergone a full rotation um, in between reaching those two limits. So in this case we have a, a, a approximate measure of about 180 degrees between the two turning points which we have to add to a f the full rotation that the balance will have been through in acquiring each of those two positions and so that's 360 plus 180 divided by 2 which gives us uh, an amplitude of uh, about 270 degrees, uh, which is a full 100 degrees larger than the amplitude that's indicated on the time grapher.